Hello everyone and welcome to Her Science. Today we are going to be talking about London dispersion. Um, as always, we're going to start off with a definition up front. We're going to talk about what we already know and how we can apply that to the new information that we are learning today. And then I have some practical use of what we are going to learn. As always, let's start off with a definition. So, London dispersion forces are caused by an uneven distribution of electrons within an atom. Now, London dispersion is an intermolecular force. So, that means that London dispersion happens between molecules or atoms. And what we know is that atoms are attracted to each other because of varying degrees of electronegativity. That is super important. That's how bonding happens. Um, so let's apply this knowledge to London dispersion with nonpolar molecules. Now, the reason why we talk about London dispersion with nonpolar molecules specifically is because the only intermolecular force that nonpolar molecules exhibit is London dispersion. Um, it is important to note that all atoms and molecules exhibit London dispersion forces, but like what I just said, the only intermolecular force that nonpolar molecules exhibit is London dispersion. Um, and just one other thing, sometimes um, London dispersion is also referred to as van der Waals force, but the van der Waals force is a general term that describes any attractive intermolecular force between molecules, and this includes both London dispersion forces and the dipole-dipole force. Now let's talk about London dispersion and nonpolar molecules. So here I have iodine. Here is the symbol for iodine. Let's pretend this is the nucleus here. And I have drawn out all of the electrons around I2. Um, now, I2 is covalently bonded. These electrons are being shared. I'll change my color. So, these electrons are being shared. Now, in a very still world, these electrons would remain in place just like this, but as we know, that's not how the world works. Um, electrons really operate more in a cloud around the nucleus of an atom. So this light green area here is the electron cloud. But we also know that electrons are constantly moving. And what happens when they're constantly moving is that for a split second of time, uh, just by happenstance, the electrons might migrate all to one side. And because electrons are electronegative, that means this side of the molecule for a split second in time becomes electronegative. And because this side is electronegative, this side becomes electropositive. Let's look at another example. Here I've drawn out methane, same thing, um, CH4. These are the electrons, they're being shared. And this is the molecule that I've drawn out with the electron cloud. And this is when all of the electrons are shared evenly. But that actually most of the time, most of the time isn't happening. Um, this is what happens when the molecule is exhibiting London dispersion. So all of the, not all of the, a lot of the um, electrons have migrated to this hydrogen molecule, making this side of methane, of this methane molecule, electronegative. And this side becomes electropositive. But what does that even mean? How does that apply to the real world? Well, I've drawn out just very generic atoms for us here. This is the nucleus of an atom, and here are the electrons on the outside in its electron cloud. Now, if this green atom starts exhibiting London dispersion, then these electrons migrate to this side. This side is now electronegative, and this side is electropositive. So, here is that atom again. Now, let's put this atom near this purple atom that is also exhibiting London dispersion. And this side of the purple atom is electronegative. Now, if we put these atoms together that are exhibiting London dispersion, they will become bonded, technically bonded, okay? But it's important to note that because of London dispersion, these nonpolar atoms are now bonded. 
together for a very brief amount of time. Again, electrons are constantly moving. This bond, quote unquote, only happens because the electrons are moving and leaving some sides electropositive and some electronegative. So this bond happens, but then the electrons move apart. And then these atoms are no longer um, bonded. And in essence, that is London dispersion. I think London dispersion is so interesting because because of London dispersion, nonpolar molecules are able to quote unquote bond with other nonpolar molecules, which is super cool to think about. But if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them down in the comments and I'll try to get back to you guys. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for next time.